have proof that if he wanted to, he would. I don't even know this guy. This guy has been sending me good night, queen, every single night since May. Every single night. Night queen, good night queen. I'm really attached to it now. Sometimes if I don't get a good night queen, it like hurts my feelings. Sometimes I say good night back. Sometimes. Good night queen, good night queen. But this has lasted longer than some of my relationships. I feel like everyone deserves to be told good night queen every single night for the rest of their life. And I love this. We're almost at 200. Gentlemen, videos like this are one of the many reasons why you should never sympathize with a girl when she says that she has dating struggles, okay? A lot of these women out here, man, they have endless amounts of options, okay? They've got dudes in their DMs all day. They've got, you know, ex-boyfriends, ex-friends with benefits. Uh, they've got the guy that they met at the coffee shop, okay? The guy that they met going down the street, whatever the case may be, gentlemen. And you've got all of these girls out here who want you to sympathize with their position, you know, oh, dating is so hard for me. I can't find a boyfriend. I can't find a husband. Or look, I'm 40 now. I've got a couple of kids in tow. And now I need to find a real man, guys. You see, what a lot of this is, guys, and what it really comes down to is manipulation. Okay, we got far too many dudes out here giving away free attention, free validation and everything to these girls who quite frankly don't deserve it. Okay, which is a fantastic segue, gentlemen, into today's question. Listen, I got this uh, this question over on Patreon from a supporter, guys, and I wanted to bring this up um, because I don't actually have a good answer to this. Okay, this is a question that this guy asked me right here. The question is, why should men waste their time? Okay, why should we be out here wasting our time, you know, messaging all these girls, um, validating them, giving them free attention and all that kind of crap, guys, when, you know, these people, a lot of them, it doesn't matter how much attention that they get. It doesn't matter how much, you know, how many times a guy calls them beautiful and all that kind of stuff and tries to make them feel good about themselves, guys. It is an endless pit. It is an endless pit where a lot of times, gentlemen, if you're the type of man who's going to come along and say, you know what, queen, you're beautiful, you're all this, you're all that, uh, she's going to just run for the hills because girls will say that they want the validation, guys, oh, but then they'll just take it and run. Okay, it's a really, really funny cycle. But guys, on today's show, we're going to be jumping through a couple of these TikToks, gentlemen, and we're going to be receiving some dating advice from women. Listen up. Now, so we've got this one right here, guys. And like I said, we're just going to be jumping through these. Um, and look, before we even jump in, I just want to say this, guys. If you are receiving dating advice from women on TikTok, I do not know what to tell you. Okay, like if you take this on board, and the sad part is there's going to be a lot of people out here who are going to listen to this and, you know, a lot of young guys in particular are going to listen to crap like this just floating around on the internet and they're going to go out and try it for years and years at a time and they're going to get screwed over. But let's just take a listen to this first piece of advice, guys, and make sure to leave your comments and your thoughts. Listen up. One of the best pieces of relationship advice that I can give you is that before you get too serious with someone, make them angry. Make them angry and see how they respond. Because you need a partner whose love is not shaken by their anger. You need someone who cares about your well-being, even when they're mad at you. Let that sink in. Now, guys, truth be told, I don't remember if I showed this one on a previous video. But listen, this is, this is just absolutely clueless behavior. Okay, rather than respect your partner, rather than respect the dude that you're with, apparently girls are supposed to go out here and make people angry just to see how they'll respond. Guys, I don't know what spells a recipe for disaster any more than this, okay? And these are coming from people who are like, you know, dating coaches, relationship experts, girls who call themselves relationship experts, guys. It's, it's such a laughable thing to say to me because relationships are not a difficult thing for girls, guys. They're really not. They can be quite difficult for men, right? But not for girls, okay? And the reason for that, guys, is because they can get into relationships super easy, They'll go out here, they'll choose all the bad boys, and then they'll cry about the consequences when it comes and bites them in the backside, right? But they're the ones that have all of the choice. They have the options, they have the choice, they have the power to say no, okay? And yet we have all of these videos, guys, talking about how, oh, I'm so mad, I can't find a man, or men always seem to treat me terribly. No, no, no. See, most men will treat you fantastic. Most men, right, will go out here and treat you something similar to this. Right, look at all these good night queens right here, guys. Good night queen, good night queen. We're up to 81, 90, right? 100, whatever. A lot of guys out here, they'll treat you like they're queen. Okay, they'll be super nice to you, but that's not the guy that you want. 
all right you know and and obviously guys this is a, an extreme example right this guy's sending hundreds of messages but you know there are girls who look like this gentlemen look at this if this girl right here cannot find a a husband that's on her right cannot find a long-term relationship that's on her right because it's certainly not the men holding you see men are supposed to quote unquote you know go out here be chivalrous and all that kind of crap and you know what men still think that they have to uphold this to get the girls right and so what are the girls doing that's my question right other than sitting on tiktok making videos complaining and giving quite awful relationship advice to be honest with you other than that what exactly is going on but let's move on to the next one and let's see what this woman has to say all right fellas listen up and listen good you don't need to be six foot you don't need to have muscles you don't need to have hair doesn't matter if you have chest hair or back hair or acne it's okay if you have a dad bod. It's okay if you're skinny. Whether you're 5'6 six or 6'2. Whether you bench 135, you don't bench at all, or you bench 315. If you're a dancer or a football player, if you have a desk job or you're a construction worker, military men, you're on the fence. <laughs> you're all wonderful, and I hope you have a great day. Keep your head up, kings. You gotta love, right, guys, this just feel-good stuff that people spew all over the internet, right? As long as things feel good, then it doesn't matter if they're right or wrong. Okay, guys, anyone who tries to tell you that, hey, you know what, gentlemen, it's okay if you're overweight, it's okay if your life is not together, it's okay if you can't take care of yourself, it's okay if X, Y, Z, you know, it's okay if you're this, it's okay if you're that. A lot of it is feel-good advice, guys. It's not going to help you. People who say this kind of crap, they're actually doing you a disservice. Anytime I see someone say, you know what, guys, it's okay to be unhealthy. It's okay to, you know, be a bit chubby or whatever. It's like, guys, no, it's not, right? That's your health that you should be concerned about. Okay, anyone who tries to tell you the opposite is just doing a disservice to you, right? Maybe it's not okay that you don't have your finances in order, or maybe it's not okay that you're not in the gym and, and crap like this, right? But we seem to go out here with this feel-good advice like, guys, it doesn't matter how you look. It doesn't matter how your life is. You know, you're going to find the one, right? You're, you're going to find the one and it doesn't matter. Guys, that is absolutely not the case at all. This is, a, this is a myth that girls will try and sell you, man. This whole like one thing and you'll eventually find your girl no matter how tall you are and whatever the case may be. Let me tell you something. A guy who's 5'4 is going to struggle a lot more to find his quote-unquote the, the one than a guy who is 6'2", you see, right? And that's the difference right there, gentlemen. And that's what they don't want to tell you, right? Because they want to go with the feel-good narrative, gets all the comments. I'm actually going to set up like a different screen. Uh, maybe after this video, maybe tomorrow. I'm going to set up a different uh, screen. So I'm going to set it up so you guys, you know, we can go and have a look at the comments on these videos together. Because off to the side of these videos, guys, is just full of comments. And it makes you, want, it makes you believe, man, that a lot of these people just want to be lied to. They're like, yes, tell me I matter no matter what. Tell me my life is completely fine even though it's falling apart. Tell me, you know, I'm going to find a girlfriend even though, like, I'm overweight. And, you know, it's like, guys, you know, they'll, they'll lie to you. And a lot of these people in the comments seem to want to be lied to. But let's continue on to the next video. I'm going to show you a quote that I just found via Twitter that might trigger something with your inner child. So if you don't feel like doing any of that work today, um, you can keep scrolling. And I, I wasn't going to pause right here, guys, but I just want to say this, right? These people look at, oh, yeah, look at me. I'm so introspective, right? And then that's my work, right? I like I, I can reflect on myself and that's my work. It's, it's always the people who claim to be most introspective and claim to do the most work on themselves that really are like the most lost. You get what I'm saying, guys? Like all, all those people that sit there and they'll, man, they'll preach to you all day about how compassionate they are, right? Like you guys know the types, right? The virtue signaling, the look at me, I've done the work on myself. I'm so compassionate and caring. It's super ironic that a lot of those people who espouse those things and claim it all over the internet, right? It's the opposite in real life. This is why, gentlemen, right? And maybe you guys have been in the, out there in long-term relationships or whatever. Um, if you've been cheated on or whatever the case may be, people like that will tell you that they're the most compassionate and that they really don't like cheaters and everything. Turns out that they're the damn cheaters, right? You know, it, it's very ironic the way that the world works, isn't it? Seriously, if you don't want to do that, just keep scrolling. I'll wait. Okay, now that the people who uh, want to get down and dirty, here we go. 
I forgive myself for viewing someone's lack of reciprocation as a challenge to convince them of my worth. That's all. That's the quote. I'm going to go grab my journal. And, and that right there, gentlemen, is like, <laughs> it's so funny to watch it when girls actually spell it out for you. Okay, because this is what they don't really want you to know, right? If you read between the lines here, the people she's talking to, dudes who treat her like crap in her past, right? Chads, essentially. And that's who she's talking to. So let's have a bit of a read of this quote. It says, I forgive myself for viewing someone's lack of reciprocation as a challenge to convince them of my worth. In other words, I view someone who doesn't pay me attention as valuable to me. That's what that means. Right? I, I need that attention. I, I need the validation from someone who doesn't want me or else I don't feel good about myself. Right? Now, this is the, the realization that you see a lot of girls magically come to, guys, as they go into their 30s. Right? As if it's like some whimsical thing that they just figured out. You see, this, this girl right here, guys, you know, she'd be in her 20s. She wouldn't give a crap about that quote. Like early 20s, guys, you think girls care about a quote like that? Right, maybe they will, right, to a certain extent, and they'll be like, but they're they're not going to internalize it until they're thirty, and they're like, you know what? Now it's time to uh to go out there because I figured out my worth. Right, girls, girls in their twenties might look at that and go, wow, that's so relatable, haha. But then they're going to keep going out there and doing the same thing. The girls who go into their thirties, that quotes like this become a little bit more pressing because they start to go, ooh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this into a virtue now, and I'm gonna go out there and get a dude who I can get married to, have a long term relationship with, even though I've been screwing around my entire life and in my twenties, right? And that's that's why guys like quotes like that are just so hilarious. Where it's like they can't even admit the faults that they've had in their relationships are all due to this, like mainly due to this, right? Chasing dudes who don't want you, okay. All the while, all those guys who would take care of you, who would care about you, all that kind of crap, they get thrown to the wayside until you need the wallet, right? Until you need the security, until you need, you know, your stove is broken, okay? You, you don't want to replace the light bulbs anymore because you're getting on, or you don't want to work that job at Starbucks anymore, so now you need to find a dude, right? And, it's, and all those guys who you threw to the wayside, now all of a sudden they're important to you. Very interesting. Ladies, if you are married, like myself, Ooh. this is not the video for you. Keep scrolling. But if you're still on the market and you don't have one of these shiny bad boys, stick around. Stay a while. I've got some pretty sound advice. Probably the most sound advice that will ever come out of my mouth. You're welcome ahead of time. Hear me out. Start dating the guys with the long hair. I'm talking shoulder length, maybe a little longer man bun material just listen if he is patient enough to deal with his hair growing out because let's face it we're all ready to cut it off and call ourselves karen can i speak to a manager listen if he's patient enough to grow his hair out that means he's patient enough to deal with all 23 of your personalities living up there in that bad boy just thank me later uh as someone with long hair uh, the answer is no, okay? Uh, guys, you see, this is what girls will try and do, right? They'll try and say, you know what? A man's respectability, a man's honor, his virtue comes down to how much of my bullcrap he's willing to put up with, right? How many of the issues that I cause in his life is he going to put up with? And that's what determines a long-term relationship for me because I want a guy who's, you know, ready, willing, and able to invest in my life and the things that I want to do. Okay, guys, it's like uh, dudes need to start respecting themselves, man. Like if there's anything you guys get from these videos, right, is like the, the first TikTok that we pulled up right there. You guys saw how many messages were there. I hope, right, I hope that the messages that were sent in the beginning were all like automated because of some program or something like that. But I doubt it, right? I doubt it. It's probably some dude who's actually sitting there messaging that girl and going, you know what? You're so beautiful. You're so this, you're so that. And here's the very funny thing about a lot of these girls, guys, is what they'll do is a lot of them will actually, believe it or not, guys, they will systematically give you just enough attention so that you remain on the hook to continue giving them attention, right? So if you're a guy who's like incredibly easy and who's going to give her attention almost no matter what, she's only going to give you like a tiny, a tiny amount to go on just so you continue giving her compliments and all that kind of crap. 
right? But if you're a guy who requires a little bit more, maybe she'll like message you here and there to keep the attention coming in, keep the attention on herself. You see what I'm saying, guys? Where like a lot of these guys, the girls know how much effort that they need to put in to lead a guy on, how many messages they need to send a week. And you know what? It's perfectly, you know, they'll sit in a relationship with a dude that they've been in a relationship for many years and they'll go, oh, you know, I'm just being friendly, right? That's why I sent this text message here. That's what I. That's why I sent this text message there. It's because I'm sitting there and I, I'm just being friendly to an old friend. It's like, no, you, you want the validation, you want the attention, and you don't want it to go away in case maybe your relationship falls through or whatever the case may be. But guys, we're going to be jumping into a couple of uh, dating profiles right here. So let's take a look at some of these. Now, right here, if I can pull up the right screen, we have a 24-year-old woman who is, you know, hasn't got her face attached to this image, but 24-year-old woman, and I believe this is on Tinder, less than a mile away. This is not my screenshot, by the way, so she's not less than a mile away from me. Uh, she's pan and she's queer. Now, let's have a look at her bio, guys. She is a goth baby coming to Vegas, to, uh, first of the second to the first of the sixth. Uh, for my 25th birthday, I'm looking to go on dates while I'm here, preferably that end in hookups. Birthday presents are also welcome. I prefer muscular or athletic men. The mechanics just don't work with bigger men. I also like older, but around my age is fine too. I am five foot six with a dyed buzz cut. Oh my goodness, man. I am five foot six with a dyed buzz cut. Tons of piercings and a resting B face. I'm a size 24 to 26 and obviously not small. So let's square this up, guys. Like as far as unrealistic dating ex expectations go, okay? This woman is in her own words, you know, not small, okay? And now if we go up just to the previous little sentence here, I prefer muscular or athletic men. The mechanics don't work with bigger men. Right? So it's like, oh, I don't have to be in shape. I don't have to take care of myself. But if I'm going to consider you, you have to take care of yourself. And guys, this is coming from a girl who, you know, self-admittedly doesn't look the best, okay? But yet her standards are still muscular and athletic, okay? And guys, make no mistake, like girls who go into their 20s and stuff like that and they go hard and whatever the case may be, they'll ruin their bodies, right? Some guys might pay you attention here or there, but that attention really starts to dry up, okay? Let's continue. I have a new lip piercing, so my O skills are somewhat limited. Sorry with an exclamation mark. Passions. Goodness, man. My passions are womanism, mental health awareness, food, language, and some alphabet, which I refuse to recognize. All right, guys, this kind of crap is so, so unreal to me, man. It's so unreal, right? Is the fact that people who... And like, here's the thing, guys, you can be whatever the hell, I don't care what the hell you are, like, knock yourself out, okay? But just look at the 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 standards in here, okay? Just look at the standards. This person is self-described, you know, a bigger woman, okay? But she wants a guy who's strong, muscular, and athletic. It's like, you know, you want to be one thing, and yet you want a different thing. You want to be a completely, you know, unserious, com you know have an identity that is just so mixed with so many different things you don't even know what the hell's going on and then you want to turn around and you want to get a man who's like focused and muscular and driven and all this kind of crap good luck to you now let's continue on to this one guys this is a different dating profile right here and i'm not sure uh, what application this is uh, actually no up to the top you guys can't see it but it says it's from match.com so here we have a woman with an age unspecified and in their own words so this must be their bio she goes on to say I love a man who can assist me with housework, but also prepare me a glass of wine with a beautiful dinner when I come home from work, smiley face. I am a homebody who loves cuddles, movies, and wine on a Friday night instead of being out at a bar, though I do love my nights out, though, uh, whatever the hell this emoji is. Looking for a man who can treat me with the loyalty and respect I deserve through everything. Right, you guys ever notice how girls talk about relationships as though it's like some, uh, some like Hunger Games trial, right? Oh yeah, you need to be there through my ups and my downs and all this kind of crap, right? It's like, how about, right, get this, this is a crazy idea. How about you stop putting your man through trials, okay? Trying to, trying to make him angry as per that TikTok, trying to cause issues. For the dudes who have been in relationships, long-term relationships and all that, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here, man. Where you can have like I've made I've made this point on previous episodes, right? You can have a girlfriend for a long period of time, 
And then there'll be days, man, where she'll just come through like a hurricane and just try and cause issues with you. Or like she'll try and make issues out of nothing. You see, guys, a lot of these girls, man, they want to create issues and then expect you to stick around. No, 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 no. See, you, you want to create issues. You can do that by yourself. That is your answer, guys. Never be afraid to be alone, okay? Absolutely never, guys. It's better to be alone than to be putting up with this crap okay anytime a girl like tests you and all that kind of crap don't get angry right don't get emotional don't get frustrated don't yell at her don't do any of that guys just say oh you know okay if you want to do that well uh, i'll catch you later right because i'm not going to put up with that there's, there's really there's really no need to get mad at this crap guys it's just something that comes and goes right it's kind of like the weather right when it rains it just rains okay and it's, it's whatever um but you know what if you if a girl's going to pull this kind of crap in a relationship with you she can do that uh without you but guys, I'm going to see what else we have here momentarily. I know I've got a few other bits and pieces to show you guys. Um, just some entertaining bits and pieces. And speaking of entertaining, check this out, right? This is on Twitter. Man, I of all the social media apps, gentlemen, I really do not like Twitter. Okay, I don't like social media apps in general, right? I think they're useful for some things like, you know, communication and, and talking to people and whatever the case may be. Um, I like chatting with you guys and stuff like that. Twitter, however is just another, it's another dimension, guys. I swear, it is another dimension. So check out this tweet right here of a woman who is unnamed, um, you know, and let's have a look what she has to say, if I can scroll correctly. Goodness. Okay, it says, Whoever told my family about my OF account, I hope you rot. They now want to see, never want to see me again, and I'm never allowed to see my baby sister again. Screw you, is what this individual says. Right? Oh, okay. Now that I'm being held accountable for my decisions, now that you guys, girls will go out here, man. They'll do like the silliest stuff, right? They'll get, they'll like get with this guy, get with that guy, cause issues over here, cause issues over there. Um, start an OF account, right? And then they still they still expect at the end, guys, to get their prince charming, right? To get that dude who they've always wanted and they you know they want to get with and settle down. It's like no, no. See, you threw away. Excuse me, I'm about to sneeze here. You threw away your right to settle down when you went into that line of business. You can you can settle down by yourself, right? You got the money, you got that bag. Um, excuse me. You got that money, you got that bag. How about you buy yourself your own house and, uh, you know, but you see guys, they, at the end of it, they all want to just be taken care of, right? They want a guy to come along and solve their issues and that'll be that. But guys, we've got a couple of stories that I'm going to run through here just to wrap up today's episode with. So guys, if you've been enjoying, make sure you leave a comment. And also, guys, if you've made it this far, can you tell me what you think uh, about this microphone, guys? So I didn't make some videos yesterday because my microphone actually broke. So I went out and got a new one, uh, which I'm currently using now. So guys, just let me know in the comments as well, like if this sounds all right um, or if there are any audio issues on your end. So let's just jump right into this Reddit story right here, guys. And this is a bit of... <laughs> This is exactly what we were just talking about a second ago, okay? This begins, the title says, He said he is working on feeling less ashamed about my past, but he is struggling. My partner, who is a 40-year-old man, is unhappy with the amount of people that I, a 29-year-old woman, have slept with in my past. I'd, so, And her count is, uh, I believe this number is her count, which is 20. I'd never judge somebody for wanting what they want. And he always wanted someone with a low count because he believes it's a, the way a woman measures her own self-worth, question mark, as if that's something confusing to understand. I have addressed this issue and given him my in-depth explanation as to why the number is where it is at. It's been six months now and it's been a roller coaster. First four months, he would have nightmares about me and daydreams and all sorts of depreciating thoughts towards me. Uh, to which he would address and express outwardly. It hurt me and we broke up. Oh, I am the victim of my own decisions, guys. And also, let's just rewind here. Um, it is highly unlikely that this count right here is actually truthful. Okay, girls, if you guys are not new to this side of the internet, like you don't know what the hell is going on, um, girls will lie about this number like you won't believe, right? Uh, guys, if you, if you ask this question and they give you a number, please just assume that the number is incorrect. Okay, and I, w I wouldn't even ask, to be honest with you guys, just just don't, like, you're never going to get a straight answer with this crap anyway, but I can r rest assured, gentlemen, the number is not 20. It's probably well in excess of 20. Let's continue. We recently got back together with the agreement that there would be no more moral shaming or uncontrollable verbalization of the issue. He promised to work through the issues internally because he sees a future with me and he really does love me. 
He is really trying, but he said to me that he still feels so much shame standing beside me sometimes, especially in public. <laughs> he said he wonders why out of all of his friends' wives, do I have to be the one that has got with the most dudes? To which I said, how does it make me any less of a good partner, wife, or a mother? My mother was with three people in her life, and she was terrible. It's not indicative of decency. Guys, let's just, let's just take stock of this sentence right here, right? Uh, Let's, let's pause on that. It is not indicative of decency. Wow, that's something, isn't it? And you know what? I feel humiliated for the feelings that he is experience, experiencing, regardless of it being only us two in the know. Am I belittling myself by staying with someone who is working on feeling less shame towards my past decisions? Or is it right to give it time? Uh, or is it right uh, to give it time, given that it's hard to change a lifelong tailored belief that a woman needs to have few partners to be considered marriage material? You know, girls will often say this stuff, right? Like it's, uh, yeah, oh, it's a, it's a cultural thing. And that, you know, guys don't want uh, that high account because, you know, it's a patriarchal thing. And yeah, guys, it is literally a biological imperative for a dude not to get with a woman who has made many of these decisions. Okay, it is not a culturally decided decision. It's actually a biological incentive because uh, surprise, surprise, guys, the higher your count, right, the less decency you have and the less, the less odds you have of being a good, a good mother, a good wife, or someone who is capable of making good decisions, right? The girls want to say that your past doesn't matter. It certainly is indicative of what your future has in store for you. Okay, if a girl has 46 partners, guys, in her past, and you think that you're going to come along and be husband number 47, and things are going to work out, I've got news for you guys. It, it doesn't work out, right? Because you, you can't come in, be number 47, and expect things to work over small, you know, because there's going to be a number 48, whether you know it or not, guys, there's going to be a number 48. And even if there's not a 48, let's just say, magically, guys, that your relationship lasts forever. You were married and, you know, you were, you were lucky number 47 or 48 or whatever the hell you are, guys. It's like, she's still attracted to those dudes that she couldn't lock down beforehand. Okay, so, you know, what the hell's even the point of being with someone who's not attracted to you, who doesn't respect you, okay? And you want to start a family with this person. It's like, your base is just completely, completely wrong. Uh, but it's actually a biological incentive. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Mind you, he has been with about the same amount of people as I have been with. More, actually. He's also a surgeon, handsome, and extremely intelligent. And you see, this right here, guys, is why she's unwilling. See, she doesn't want to throw this guy away, right? Because he's a, ni he's a nice meal ticket, right? He see, this guy's a nice meal ticket. Otherwise, yeah. I feel this is important to know because it's not as if there should be a wealth, or a wealth of self-confidence issues that lie behind the mindset. It's the way he was raised. Yeah, guys, if you don't want your girl to go out there and have a high body count, guys, it's just the way you were raised. It has nothing in, in nothing based in reality, uh, nothing substantiated behind it. Let's have a look at some of these comments, given that we're on Reddit. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. You're dating someone who thinks count is how women define their self-worth. Uh, the misogyny jumps out, doesn't it? I've never heard of a woman reflecting badly on or even thinking about her count unless a man provokes her to. Yeah, his obsession is creepy, misogynistic, and entirely designed to keep you keep you down. Yeah, you know him not wanting you to have to have had an extensive past, guys. He's just he's <laughs> men are just trying to hold you back, right? Can't even make that up. But guys, we're going to be quickly jumping into today's uh, last story here because the episode is dragging on a little bit. So I wanted to cover this final one before we wrap up today's episode. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get out two videos today, guys. I need to be heading out, so. We will be covering this one and maybe running a little bit over time. Let's take a look here. This one right here. And again, posted on relationship advice, guys, very recently, okay? I, a 24-year-old male, am mad at my girlfriend who is 22 years old for flirting with another guy. This is going to be long, blah, blah, blah. I met this girl about 10 months ago. We have been madly in love ever since. I admit she is more open than me, and that's completely fine, as later into the relationship, we made some rules for both of us to follow. One of those rules was uh, flirting with other people. She thinks that flirting with other guys is okay. I disagreed and I said, no, that's not what I want. I told her that people flirting with her is completely fine. Her going with it and flirting back, that is not fine. We went back and forth and decided on flirting with other people is okay if it will help you get your way or special treatment somewhere. I went with it because yes, why the hell not? Fast forward to yesterday night. We were talking on the phone and she says that she has a crush at school. Blah, blah, blah. 
She says that he has a crush and I don't even know him. And then two seconds later, I ask more about him. And she says, ah, oh, yeah, we talked a couple of times. And then she goes on to say that you'd be annoyed by our, by our conversations. This right here is where I knew that she was lying. Because I ask, and she says that he makes stupid, meaningless jokes. Finally, after I kept pushing, literally a day after, later, she says that, yes, we had flirty talks before. Goodness. I then ask, what way was she trying, uh, what was she trying to get by flirting with him? She doesn't answer and says that she is sorry and that she shouldn't have done it in the first place. I find what she did very disrespectful and very childish. It is as if we have been given uh, droplets of truth to see how I would react and then decide whether or not she will tell me. Not to mention she only told me about the flirts because I kept pushing the night before and I kid you not, she was like, I don't remember, although this was less than two to three months ago. Please help me, what should my behavior be here? What should I do about this, especially since this is not the first time she lies and then gets caught? Too long didn't read, girlfriend puts a rule, doesn't follow it, and gets mad that I held her accountable. No, see, you're not holding her accountable, guys. Like, I, I, it's always so funny to me. It's like, oh, I caught my girl talking to another guy, or I caught my girl doing this. She doesn't respect my boundaries. That's because you don't want to enforce them, guys. Right, it, it, this guy has no intention of leaving this girl, and that's why she continues. Right, she did this behavior in the past. He allowed it, okay, and because he allowed it, it's just going to continue to get worse and worse. Guys, girls like this, just leave them. Gentlemen, we're going to be leaving today's show there. As always, make sure you leave your thoughts and your comments to some of the things that we've covered in this episode, guys. There's plenty of stories and little bits and pieces that we covered today. Uh, as always, guys, if you're interested in supporting the channel, make sure you check out the Locals and the Patreon links in the description, guys. Both of those are fantastic ways to support if you are interested, and they have exclusive pieces of content and stuff over there. But gentlemen, we're going to be leaving today's episode there a little bit over time. So as always, make sure you take care of yourselves, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next episode. Peace.